Hello aviators! Today I'm going to tell you more about modifiers. What are they, how to set them and uh, what you can do with them. Perhaps you think you know everything about modifiers already. You know that these are various uh, control, shift and other keys. Uh, and this of course gives us more bindings possible. But uh, not all simulations uh, allow you to also add a modifier on your HOTUS or other gaming device. And this is a feature that DCS allows you to do and it's great. I will not add this one because I already have one. It's called Tmod. Very interesting with modifiers is also that you can combine uh, these various shifts from one device and presses from other device. For instance, modifier on the HOTAS and key press on, on the keyboard or the other way around. Modifier on the keyboard and something on my stick. A lot of flexibility, a lot of possibilities. And we can also use modifiers with axes. So let's talk about it all a little bit more. Let's cover the simple case first, which is key presses or uh, button buttons on the on your hotas. When you have a function without modifier and another function with a modifier or with two modifiers, everything works totally predictable. You know, we press the trigger with a modifier, it goes there. With a modifier, it goes somewhere or to the other action with two modifiers to another action. And if you press another modifier that you don't have uh, any action assigned with that button, nothing happens. So this is very easy and it works as expected. By the way, in uh, this window, you can actually just press the modifier and it will stay there. It will, they will accumulate here. You don't have to hold them. Uh, this is uh, handy when you want to use a modifier on one hand and some spring-loaded uh, button press on another hand uh, which when it returns it always goes through another you know pov position so I can just hold it with there and then press OK with the mouse. Easy. How do modifiers interact with axes? It's a little bit different. Let's say I will add uh, some spring-loaded axes here and uh, obviously you wouldn't use spring loaded but for volume knob but uh, this is just the demonstration and another modifier so now when i press the modifier on my uh, throttle it works if i press the left control and move the excess it works and if i don't have any modifiers it works as well it looks like with keyboard uh, or other button presses, but it's not so. If I press left alt, which is not defined as a modifier for the joy slider at all, it still works as the axis without a modifier. So it's actually very good. You can assign an axis with a modifier even, and if you don't use that modifier, then the axis acts like without modifier at all. Talking about modifiers and axis, there's also one neat side effect you can use. For instance, I have a modified, you know, what is it, this uh, thumbstick on Stax uh, throttle, and I use it for absolute horizontal shift camera view. Of course, this is uh, when I don't have a, a head tracking. And when you are on some position and release the modifier, it will get stuck there. So this is cool, you know, and even if you press the modifier for something else, if you don't move the axis, it will not, uh, you know, change the view. This function overload with uh, modifiers is very useful for non-essential axes like uh, light intensity or various volume knobs, where you uh, don't, uh, where you're not afraid of uh, sudden changes. Because, of course, you have to realize that the moment the axis is uh, set differently for different modifier, the moment you use it with the original modifier, it will suddenly jump there. You know. But for lights or volumes, it's not a problem. It's not like it will cause a, um, you know, critical maneuver or something. So if you use it for non-essential access, you can overload a single or a few physical access with many, many functions with these modifiers. I would encourage you to be a little bit brave with your modifiers as well, because sometimes you can get interesting results. Uh, this is L39 and I have uh, this NDB 
uh, tuning thingy that has uh, two encoder-like, uh, you know, uh, elements and one axis-like element. And I actually have two encoders and one axis close to each other. And when I press my secret modifier, I can very easily, you know, change the frequency. And then if I press another modifier, it's the same thing, the same encoders and the same axis for the outer NDB frequency. So it's a, it has a nice flow to it, you know. I'm holding one modifier and the modifier chooses the inner or outer NDB and then I use one encoder, another encoder, an axis for the elements there. In my case I actually used comma and period uh, as my modifiers and they also, um, you know, the layout kind of matches the layout of these buttons. They are next to each other, I, exact, I know exactly which one is which. So sometimes adding a uh, kind of uh, niche modifier can help you with some flow. Let's talk about some technical details with these modifiers. You notice that uh, I have a T-mode modifier and uh, I actually have it on my stacks so let's just pretend I'm going to add another button and here you can rename it so you can have for instance T-mod 2 let's say you know and this is very cool because this gives the modifier a logical name and all the binding files all the files with uh, keyboard and uh, orders bindings use these logical names they are not the physical joy buttons 18 names you know I wish I knew about this option to rename the modifier because uh, I actually um, migrated through a few uh, low-end uh, throttles and on each of them I had a modifier and I left the name as it was and this name then appeared in uh, front of the bindings you know like joy button 18 plus joy button 2 for instance from joystick you know it was so confusing but uh, with names like tmod or t1 t2 which i actually used in my internal notes uh, in my internal documents uh, it would be much more clear and it can be so clear just you know use the name here that's all now it also uh, allows for easier migration from one uh, throttle to another but you can't do it you know at the same time sorry 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 i have to use the same name because you can't use the same name you know so you can't have uh, multiple physical buttons with the same modifier name so what you have to do first you have to re remove the original modifier and then create it again on your new throttle but at that moment all the bindings work so as we just discussed you can't have a two physical buttons, uh, not even on different devices, and uh, give them the same the same uh, modifier name. That's not possible. It could be handy, for instance, uh, if you switched, I don't know, various throttles, physical throttles, uh, but why would you do that? If you, for instance, use it uh, for a different plane, then you can have different modifiers on a different plane, and it's an it's a non-issue. You will hardly switch the same devices or between two two throttle devices for the same plane, you know. So that's not a problem. This also means that you can't have a uh, right shift and left shift uh, named as a shift, but it's not really a problem, you know. Instead, just use uh, left shift plus some key and right shift plus the same key as two different bindings for the same action. It's easy. Now let's dive even deeper. The modifiers are stored per plane, so you have to set them up for each plane and also uh, for for this UI layer or you know general uh, separately. But you can of course uh, copy paste them. So you can take this file if you if it is as you wish, which in this case this one isn't. This is an old file which uses you know bindings from my old. TWC as throttle and you can paste it into another uh, plane directory you know then I would recommend to restart the game because uh, I don't know when this file is loaded but very likely just as with other input files it is loaded when the game is started and there is no option you know like you can do with other profiles there is no option to do it for modifiers at least I didn't see 
any way how to do it. That's not a problem, you know, how, how, how often do you change modifiers? If, for whatever reason, you have a uh, imp, you know, binding file, for instance, this is a keyboard file, with all modifiers, you can simply, uh, what's the keyboard, uh, replace the occurrences with something new. I will not do it here because uh, in this case this file has more issues. It also uses old modifier for keyboard from keyboard and also has another modifier from TWCS. So I'll have to work hard on this one. But it is possible if you switch a single shift or single modifier for another modifier, you just use the logical name. You know the name you can you can write here and you simply uh, replace the old one for the new one and you're done. So that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of using the logical names. And finally, my very special case. I have a keyboard which uh, doesn't have right all, right control at all. And right alt is on the, on the edge of the alphanumeric keyboard where right control should be. But I've got this apps uh, modifier next to it. So I would like this one hacked as a right alt and it's very easy to do, you know, you just remove the right old right control and start adding. This one will be right old. Because of the collision you have to remove the original modifiers first, of course. And this one, right old, will be right control. Trust me, it all makes sense for me. And I will save it and now I have right control on the outer side of the numeric keyboard, half a numeric keyboard, and it works. And right alt, oh, I don't know what is with right alt bound here. Yeah, it works as well. So to recap it, modifiers are specific per plane, but you can copy paste the file to another plane and after you restart the game, you're set. But sometimes it's easier to just do it in uh, the GUI anyway. You can assign uh, modifiers on your HOTAS, which is cool, not all games allow it, and you can use any combinations of uh, any combination of modifiers from any number of devices with a button press from any other device, and it still works. Axis act a little bit differently, because if you if you're not holding a modifier that is uh, defined for that axis, the axis falls back to its defined non-modified function, which is actually very practical for many things because um, I can't imagine I would uh, overload my, <laughs> you know, main uh, roll and pitch axis. But uh, for other axes that are multi-purpose, it is practical that uh, if you're uh, holding that axis and going to press some uh, keyboard combination it will not stop working when the modifier used is not modifier assigned to that axis okay complicated let's go on you can rename those modifiers that is super cool and if you have a keyboard like me you can find your lost right control for instance and finally get creative with your modifiers sometimes it's easier to create a new modifier for some obscure unique function in some plane than uh, to give it the same combination of keys that you use for other functions in different planes. You know, it makes the uh, things much clearer mentally. And with that I hope you learned something new about modifiers. Fly safe and see you later.